This is a case of a 60-some-year-old uh, uh, male patient with back pain and uh, MSSA bacteremia, and the back pain evaluated for possible abscess and discitis. The patient was intubated. So the T1 is what I'm trying to draw your attention, because this one was read as degenerative changes and um, uh, at L12, no abscess, no discitis, no uh, osteomyelitis. But T1 is, conf is to me, is very important. And, and unless your window is really well, you cannot tell the difference between this versus that. Regular window is all grayed out. It's feel like looks, looking pretty good. This is the um, T1 post contrast. We should have put more attention to why there is so much enhancement along the dural surface. And uh, we should have uh, cut the uh, wide thecal sac so effaced every, uh, at many levels. Even though they look like fat, but they did not really f uh, fat suppress. And then we did not identify this thing, which I uh, later found out. Hmm. And we did not identify, uh, let's see what the, there's some fluid here too. This is axial post contrast, basically effacement and uh, epidural contrast enhancement. This is May 28. Another thing that sh we should learn that the diffusion, you have to find out why this is white line, white line, and then at the bottom there's no white line. Because those white lines, they are part of the epidural abscess. And this white line, because well, there's no white line here, because this is pure uh, CSF. So we should have followed this up there, and there is uh, epidural abs uh, abscess already at, in, at that time. So I r performed uh, this study uh, three days later, cervical spine. You can see uh, the entire epidural is filled with pus, prevertebral, um, soft tissue swelling in the prevertebral space, mm -hmm. and the abscess in the longus coli muscle, uh, which is here, from here to here. This is prevertebral. Uh, uh, this is a prevertebral space fluid, and this is longus coli abscess. This is post contrast in the cervical region. You can see there are so many lines: one line, two line, three line, four line. It's really the epidural. Uh, this dura is from here is here and here. Everything else is abscess, uh, and then terminate here. Uh, stop. I basically determine it at the most superior part of the cervical region. Mm. This is very difficult because the uh, patient's moving and the image is not very sharp. So you can just cannot rely on the black pus. Uh, you have to rely on there are some abnormal during contrast enhancement to call it. And also the epidural, or this is the abscess in the longus coli muscle. Mm and the flag mount nearby. I called them about this abscess, and they did order a brain to evaluate how bad it is. Again, the patient always moved, but maybe there's too little tiny, either stroke or little tiny pus in the subarachnoid space, it's hard to tell. Uh, but overall, the brain looks okay. And then the thoracic spine, again, T1 is our helper. You have to really window it. Maybe there's some sparing of the CSF here. There's all pus here, it's grayish. So basically, we use a T1 to as a cheap way of flare to uh, to separate this normal CSF from pus. Like there's not much left. There's not much C normal CSF left. Maybe a little bit here left, but all this and all that are and all the in front uh, in our epidural abscess. Without, a sp without osteomyelitis or discitis. So this is the thoracic spine post contrast. Mm. Uh, again, too many lines and, uh, and axial T2. There's so many things are pressing on, on the, for example, this thing. Mm. This abscess compressing on the cord. Uh, another one here on there. This is uh, after surgery, about a week later. They, they drain the abscess and uh, 
now you can see most of the CSF are regained but it's the post surgical bed is so hard to tell but at least you get some CSF I can see that mm. in front of this line maybe it's still some epidural abscess but posterior to it and the cord is okay the CSF is still here the dorsal epidural abscess which the surgeon have good time easy time to access to so it's all drained